New York Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has unveiled new details of her much talked about Green New Deal. It's in a letter to her colleagues. The freshman Democrat also asking for support for a resolution which outlines a plan to eliminate carbon emissions in the United States in a decade. The letter reads, quote, we call for a national social, industrial, and economic mobilization at a scale not seen since World War II, end quote. Christopher Clack, a physicist and founder of a clean energy consultancy firm, estimates the core of the plan could cost at least $2 trillion. He says, quote, it's a daunting task, and I'm not sure that the authors of the Green New Deal fully comprehend how much they'll be needed. Uh, or how much they'll need. Even sympathetic experts are casting doubts. Paul Bledsoe, a strategic advisor at the Progressive Policy Institute, writes, I understand the value of aspirational goals. My personal view is that undermines the credibility of the effort, end quote. What do you think? Uh, I think this is absolutely ridiculous and over the top. She's spending money in her world by trillions of dollars. The problem is that she really is the leader of the Democratic Party at this moment. When she said something, everybody tends to follow it. Every presidential candidate is, are you on board? Yes, I'm on board. They don't even know the details of the plan. Um, and let me give you a sense of how big this is. If you spent a million dollars a day every day, it would take you almost 3,000 years oh. to get to one trillion. Mm -hmm. So you want to go out Double and spend it. between two and seven trillion dollars converting... I, and I always love, by the way, when the Democrats say, well, we got to do everything with electricity. Well, guess how we get electricity in this yep. country? Yeah. Guess what? It comes from fossil fuels. That's how so, primarily we So, we Kennedy, generate. what do you say to the people who push back on what the congressman is saying about the situation with how much money we spend? We have not gotten any smaller with Republicans in, no. in control by, no. uh, by camera uh, in the White House, any of it, in terms of how big the government is. So we spend a lot of money anyway. We do spend a lot of money, and I, I put some of this on, on Paul Ryan, who said that he was going to cut entitlements, and didn't do it. And, and you have to have some sort of entitlement, entitlement reform in order to keep the government going as is, and that's without adding new ones. And the way they're talking about this, and the way they're, they're talking about addressing historical oppression through the Green New Deal, mm -hmm. it is essentially an entitlement. Now, I actually share with the Congresswoman the, uh, the desire to be off fossil fuels, and I, I share the desire to no longer prop up regimes like we have in Venezuela and Saudi Arabia. I would love for the United States to no longer be oil dependent. I don't think it's the government's job to spend trillions of dollars that we don't have when the check for the 21 trillion hasn't even shown up yet. And that's yeah. going to gobble up most of the general budget. And you can rely on the incredible innovation and private industry in this country, which will solve those problems without government force. Uh, real quickly, the Sierra Club, Tom Steyer's Next Gen America, as well as veteran Democrat Republic, uh, Representative Earl Blumenauer of Oregon, all among the first backers of Ocasio-Cortez's Green New Deal. However, and you pointed this out, all the groups in the memo listed as endorsers, quote, are pending final resolution language. You're right. They don't know exactly what's in it. Yeah, at this point. but they're all you know, endorsing. I, I, I always love how, you know, sort of confused and misinformed she is on the facts. And when you come down to this quote, I, I loved when she said that it's going to generate millions of good, high wage jobs. No, actually, factually, it's going to do exactly the opposite. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, we need 800,000 new IT workers every year right now for all of the technology that we have going on in our economy. We are only producing 40,000 of them. So we are creating all these jobs right now that are open. She wants to create even more. We don't have the training for it. At the same time, according to McKinsey, we're automating a lot of this other yes. technology on the other side of the spectrum. The closer we get to the yep. green energy, it creates more automation and it creates more jobs that we don't have people for. So her plan will hasten this skills gap and put people out of work at a dramatic pace according to our own government. Yeah, and this is, this is, I'm glad Tom Sire is on board. Maybe we can confiscate all of his billions of dollars and still not pay for the $2 trillion. The truth is that big programs like this are done through force. They're not done voluntarily, especially if you're going to do it over the next 10 years. And it's going to be the middle class that's paying for it. It's not going to be the rich with the tippy tippy tops that they like to pay for. It's going to be you and me. Everyday Americans are going to have to talk to, to be paying for this. And guess what? The fossil fuel industry does get subsidies, but they can survive on their own if you took them away. 
the green energy right. field cannot survive and will implode without the government propping it up. And by the government continuing to prop it up, it doesn't encourage innovation for new technology because they have a crutch of the American taxpayer. Woo! All right. Yeah. I think we got it. <laughs> well we got said. It. We're going to move No to, to the Green Deal. The president will say predictably that the state of our union is strong. But the truth is, and the state of the Trump administration is embroiled in chaos and incompetence. The state of the president's foreign policy is incoherent, inconsistent. The state of our union is in need of drastic repair. And tough talk there. Chuck Schumer reading from the floor of the Senate. Some Democrats on the offensive ahead of tonight's address. Katie Hill is a newly elected California Democrat who also serves on the escort committee for tonight. How you doing? And welcome back here to America's Newsroom. Um, I'm great. How are you? I'm Thanks guessing this will be your first on the floor of the House, correct? This will be. I'm oh, excited. Okay, so here we just had Sarah Sanders on. I don't know if you had a chance to listen to her, but part I know, of it, yes. Uh, most ears will be trained on the the border security issue. Now, about yes. 10 o'clock last night, Speaker Pelosi put out a long email. And in that email, there were a list of things that Democrats are pursuing, okay? They go the following. Funding for humanitarian assistance, funding for additional immigration judges, a thousand new customs officers, new imaging, and cutting-edge technology. It was about two weeks ago, Congresswoman, where the president counteroffered to end the shutdown. And the list goes like this. 800 million in humanitarian assistance, 800 million in drug detection technology, 2,700 border agents, 75 new immigration judge teams, and then the White House threw in three years protection for dreamers and then asking 5.7 billion in funding for steel barriers. In a compromised world, it doesn't seem like the two sides are that far apart. Would you agree? I agree. Yes, I do agree. And I think that this is this is a perfect example of where we do need to get past the semantics and really come to this compromise. And, you know, I know that that means that the hardliners and both sides are going to not be happy and are probably not going to vote for it. But I believe that most people are somewhere in the middle and recognize okay, that so at I the see end of your, the day. I yeah. see your list and then I see their list. Would you agree if those two lists were agreed upon to get a deal done for the American people? Yeah, look, those aren't those aren't uh, too far apart for me, and so I think that I would agree to something very similar to that. Um, I think that the hang-up is again going to be on this term, so I really, really hope that people can get past that. And at, at the end of the day, both sides are going to claim victory. Both sides are probably going to, um, at some point, be uh, be throwing stones at the other side. That's just natural. But I think we can come to some kind of an agreement that keeps the government open and that addresses the major issues that are happening along the border. Okay, you sound like you're a yes on this. And if, <laughs> if that is the case, I think you're very right when you characterize it that way. Both sides will be able to claim victory. Isn't that what government is all about? I mean, that's why, that's why you ran, correct? That's, that's how it should be. I agree. Okay. Now, when you come into the hall tonight, uh, you will be escorting air traffic controllers. Um, I will. Uh, my s the suggestion there is that do not do another shutdown. Um, That's wh exactly when it. you think about the last 35 days, uh, I think most Americans were, were highly impressed by the federal workers who chose to work without a paycheck. Were you? Oh my gosh, yes. And I went back to the district every single weekend uh, and I spoke to them and I spoke to the air traffic controllers. I just couldn't believe the dedication and the service and the loyalty that they had to our country uh, showing up every day, but, but putting everything into it. I mean, you know, Chrissy, the woman that I'm bringing, she's a veteran. She's a single mom. Uh, she was experiencing homelessness before she got her life you know, back on track and became an air traffic controller. And the most devastating thing that I heard during this entire episode was how her young daughter asked her, uh, if because of the shutdown, if they were going to have to sleep in their car again. And that's what I can't bear uh, to have happen again. So I really, really hope that these stories that came forth during the shutdown, uh, the dedication of these hard workers, uh, this will prevent us from they, having They, they, uh, were, they were very happen. impressive. Listen, thanks for coming on today. I'm putting you down as a yes, okay? Is that all right? <laughs> Is that going to get you in trouble? I'm sure it'll get me in trouble with some folks. Listen, I don't want to. We, we all know it's not that 2,000 miles. Uh, concrete barrier so I'm I'm you know as long as it's not that I'm pretty good <laughs> we'll, we'll bring you back real soon okay thanks for coming on today, so Katie Hill, California thank you